Hi guys, it's time for me to introduce you the IUCN whitelist. Have you ever heard about whitelist before? If you don't, don't worry. Let me show you now. The IUCN whitelist is the world's most comprehensive information source on animals, fungi, and plant species. Inside the list, it provides information on population size and trends, the geographic range, the conservation status, and habitat needs of species. It is a powerful tool for people who work for biodiversity conservation. With the list, it always categorizes the action for policy change to protect animals. To understand more about the list, let's look into the history. Here is a brief history of the IUCN Red List. The list was started in 1950 with a card index system. And in early 1960, it was transformed into a two volume set of data sheets. And the first comprehensive list was published in 1964. In 2000, the IUCN Red List was released on World Wide Web. And after that, of course, we can uh, use our computer to search the species inside the list. And over the years, uh, the data in the IUCN Red List was growing bigger and bigger. And hopefully, we hope that IUCN can record down all species in the Red List so that we can pass the data to our next generations. So to understand the core mechanism, let's look into the conservation status. If you ever have a species, uh, what IUCN will do is, first of all, you will see if it's uh, already eroded before or not. If it's not, then they will put it into a not evaluated uh, categories. If it's already evaluated before, then we will see if you have adequate data or not. If we don't, then we will put it uh, into a data deficient uh, categories. If we have enough data, then we will further evaluate the extinction risk. And uh, here, as you can see, we have uh, seven different categories uh, to represent different extinction risks. For the lowest uh, with the category is called least concern, as you can see it's in the bottom. Uh, so basically within this category, uh, it means that the species uh, have a very low chance to be extinct in the near future. So uh, perhaps we don't have to put too many effort for that species, but uh, yeah, but we still have to make sure that uh, it will not go worse. And for the next level, it's called nearly threatened. Uh, within this uh, category, it means that you have a higher, uh, relatively higher extinction risk compared with the least concerns. And uh, if if the situation gets worse, then uh, that species can go into these uh, threatened categories. Uh, in threatened categories, you can see we have uh, three different uh, status. Uh, we have a vulnerable, we have endangered, and we have critically endangered. So basically, uh, uh, the one we call it critically endangered species is the most uh, dangerous one. So within these categories, it means that uh, those species is uh, going to extinct soon. We have to pay extra attention to uh, protect them. Uh, if, we, if we don't do that, then uh, most probably the species will go to the extinct categories. We have two different levels of uh, extinct categories. We have extinct in the wild. It means that the species basically doesn't exist in uh, in the uh, wild natures. Uh, the the 
that species is only uh, can be found in uh, uh, monitoring environments such as uh, laboratory or maybe uh, ocean park, the zoo. Uh, so uh, basically, is uh, if we don't uh, do uh, if we don't protect them, those uh, species is most likely will go to extinct very very soon. And finally, we we have a category called extinct. In inside this category means that the, we we already lost this uh, species uh, now and. Uh,